Good morning, I am Stephen Edholm from skillcult.com and youtube.com slash skillcult. I make a lot of videos about axes because I like axes and I want to see more people using more axes more better. And to that end, we're going to talk today about one of the aspects of how an axe actually works. Now, I'm not a physicist or a sciencer by schooling or nothing like that, but I have chopped me some wood and I do have insight into this problem and I ain't afraid to say so. So let's get started. So let's start with the common adage that you should let the weight of the axe do the work or let the axe do the work. Can we let the weight of the axe do the work? What about this axe? Is this doing any work? This axe is doing no work. This is a paperweight with potential. An axe does no work unless it's moving and it's up to us to make it move and realize the potential for this to do work. Here's a simple equation. Mass combined with velocity equals momentum. You can think of momentum as the energy stored in the axe head and its ability to do work when it hits something. How heavy is the axe head? How fast is it traveling? How much energy is stored for use? So following this equation, what someone means if they say they're going to chop hard is that they're going to increase the momentum. So we can increase the momentum to chop deeper into the wood, but remember that momentum is the product of mass and velocity together, not a variable. These two are variable variables. But if you're standing in the woods next to a tree with any given ax in your hand, the mass is fixed. Velocity is what we can change, how fast we swing the ax. Still things want to stay still and moving things want to keep moving. Here we have two couch potatoes. Neither one of these things is going to move unless we move it or some other force moves it. I can leave this ax here all year and the tree's not going to get cut down. Now this is important because an ax has this still inertia when you pick it up. So you have to lift the weight and break that and then you have to swing it and further break that inertia and create this sort of forward inertia to hit the still inertia of the tree. So a heavy ax is going to be harder to lift and harder to swing to break that initial inertia and create that forward inertia. While a light axe is going to be easier to lift and easier to swing, but you have to swing it faster and that also takes energy. Let's say we have a three pound axe that's traveling 75 miles per hour and that equals, we'll just say random number, 100 units of momentum. So we can keep this number, 100, by either raising the weight while lowering this, or the opposite, lowering this and raising this. So over here we have a heavy axe, let's say this is 8 pounds, it's going to be hard to lift, hard to swing, and just the fact that it's so heavy means it's hard to swing fast, and you're going to hit a limit to its potential. Over here, we have a tiny axe. Let's say this is one pound on the same size handle. Now we can swing a light axe to make it work more, we know that, but you can only swing it so fast, no matter how light it is. And that limits its potential because you can't swing it super fast. So in between here, there's a happy place. And it's different for different people, it's different for different kinds of work, but you can take an axe and swing it a little faster and use a lighter axe, or swing it a little slower and use a heavy axe. Every experienced chopper will tell you that it is ignorant to swing every axe that you pick up as fast as possible to try to hit as hard as possible. The goal should be to take any given axe and swing it as fast as you need to to get the work that you need to get done finished without expending excessive amounts of energy. I refer to that as physical efficiency. And I talk about that in the long and geeky equivalent to this video, which will be linked very shortly. So if someone says, let the weight of the axe do the work, or let the axe do the work, what they really mean, even if they don't know it, is let the momentum of the axe do the work. What you don't want to do is try to force the axe through the wood after it hits the tree. The work is done by the time the axe hits the tree. Think of it that way. So if I'm letting the momentum do the work, even if it's a lot of momentum, I'm swinging very fast, by the time I hit the tree, I'm not pushing anymore. What you don't want to do is take the axe and try to shove it through the wood. That's going to lead to fatigue, broken handles, injuries, and all sorts of fun stuff. Try looking at chopping through the factor of velocity because it's velocity that you can change to create the momentum that you need with any given weight and length of axe. But be careful. The ability to create that momentum and still maintain accuracy and stay safe and not break your axe is hard won. It takes time. Every experienced chopper will tell you the same thing and they're not kidding and they're right. Concentrate on accuracy, concentrate on your strategy and the speed 
and power will come later. To see a longer, geekier treatment of this same subject, click this link right here and follow all of my acts related and other self-reliance type content. Subscribe to my blog at skokult.com or follow my YouTube channel. And why everyone who's interested in woodcraft, bushcraft, prepping, survival, primitive skills, homesteading, etc., is not already following my content is beyond me. But hey, it's your funeral, folks. It's your funeral.